take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean, and this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Be sure to check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of with the partner they fell in love with. You know, we're recording this episode on the eve of uh, President Trump announcing the extension of the social distancing and the plan until April 30th now in the United States. 2020. And, you know, this is a, a very difficult time, a very challenging time. For so many people. And this is our 100th recording. This is our 100th recording, not episode that's aired, but 100 episodes. And a lot has happened during the time that we have been recording. Life is completely different, yeah. Life is very different right now Mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And, you know, our topic for today was going to be about addiction, alcohol, drug addiction. And, you know, the president didn't mention also that... You know, his concern is that there's going to be an increase in suicides, an increase in drug addiction. So it's very fitting that it kind of aligns with what we were going to talk about today. Yeah, they always say that uh, in times of recessions or other difficulties, alcohol sales go up. That is true. Because people are stressed. Yeah. And they're looking to self-medicate. And they use it as a coping mechanism. And the liquor stores are considered essential right now. And I know that we, you know, we have kind of like a fun little thing about inviting people over to our home pub, pouring a drink and sharing the stories. But what we're talking about here is something way more serious. Mm-hmm. Right? We're talking about people who are truly struggling with addiction and they're struggling in recovery. A lot of times it's very difficult for them to get to AA meetings, you know, 12-step support meetings. And now even more than ever, it is more difficult for them to find support. Right, because you have to do it online. And sometimes a lot of people in that situation might not have the resources of computers and internet to even go online. But if you are able to go online, we are offering uh, twice a week support groups for people that are in recovery. A free online addiction support group that Mm -hmm. is happening on Wednesdays from 2.30 to 3.30 Central Time and on Sundays from 3 to 4 on Central Time. That, you can find the link for that event on our Lighthouse Emotional Wellness page. You know, I went out for a hike today, and I was listening to Carolyn Mace, M-Y-S-S, who's one of my greatest teachers, whom I've never met. And she was talking about the, you know, her, her thing is that it, it shows up spiritually before it shows up physically, that there's always a, a physical avenue for our spiritual and emotional and mental ideas to manifest, right? And she would say, and, and I think this is really interesting, and I've had issue with this for a long time, that we've had a fear pandemic. You know, people are afraid of things in our food and things in our water and all sorts of things in our plastics and all that kind of stuff, which is true, but that's quite a luxury to worry about as opposed to coronavirus. Something that is really eminent that's going to impact you immediately versus something that might slowly change your quality of life. And what she was talking about, and I think this is the important part, is it's what we think that generates what we feel that supports our immune system. And that's our best defense. Our best defense right now is to stay positive and to stay optimistic and having fun and and get out of our heads, which is really hard to do when you're in isolation. 
it is even more difficult for someone who is struggling with an, an addiction, mm-hmm. right? Whereas, you know, it is important when you are recovering to have structure in your life, to have a routine, to have a support system, you know, to make sure that you systemize your life so that you are not, you don't succumb to the triggers. Our life is completely turned upside down. And any structure that any of us had, any routine that any of us had, is gone. And we are now trying to scramble, all of us, united, across the board, are scrambling to figure out what is the new norm for now. You know, I would say that our routine was externally driven before. What time did I have to be at work? What time do the kids have to be at school? When do I have to do whatever all those obligation type of things are? And now the burden is actually on creating an internal structure, which is something that we've done, right? We've we've committed to 10 a.m. meditation every day. Right? Live meditation, yes. On Couple Synergy Facebook page, we do live meditation every day at 10 a.m. We have this today was day 14 mm-hmm. of doing that. And that starts our day off. And then we have other things that we filled in. We're going for a hike every day. We are having our meals at the same time. Some days we have no TV and no internet and no, or no social media type of stuff so that we have good boundaries with that. And we do other things, you know, like the podcast. <laughs> but I'll tell you, even with all of the things that we do and how we have adapted to restructure our lives, it still feels out of sorts. Sure. You still feel limited. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are going out, you can only go out to go for a walk someplace. And a lot of places are are shut down and closed. You can't even go for a walk there. Um, Non-essential travel is what they are, you know, pushing. And so you have to be very cognizant of what you are doing, you know, that you make sure it's essential. This is really has put a strain, you know, on all our lives, ours included, even though we are really good at figuring out how to occupy our time and be productive. And, you know, we have this podcast as a great outlet, but for a lot of people out there that don't have this outlet are not used to having an outlet. I can see how it'd be really difficult for them right now. And to those people out there, I'd like to challenge you. Because you still have plenty of choice. I mean, you think about a person who's locked in a prison cell. And some people choose to work out and get strong and go to college and get educated and even defend themselves in whatever their their legal battle is. And some people wither away, you know. And we were talking about that, right, with Victor Franco, Man's Search for Meaning. And now more than ever, we really have to dig deep. We really have to choose life and choose what we're going to do with what we've been dealt. Because that is one thing we have as human beings. We always are going to have the choice of how we respond to something. And absolutely for sure, someone's going to lose someone. For sure, that's happening. And and that sucks. And, you know, I, I, I thought about that today. My heart was a little heavy because those people that are going to cross over because of this are going to die alone. And their celebration of life will probably not happen. And if that was a person that you're close to, I feel for you for that, 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 or, or if that's you. And I would say, you know, in the same way that we have the internet and people are connecting virtually, we can still connect through prayer, through meditation, sending energy, whatever that is for you. That's real stuff. And stay there where where you can do something. And and that is desperately needed, even more so for someone who is struggling with an addiction. They need the support. You need the support. You need to reach out to someone. You know, call your sponsor. Call the people on your list, on your relapse prevention plan, because it's really important for you to be connected now more than ever. You know, one of the reasons why we are talking about this, this topic is because it is extremely important when it comes to relationships. It is one of the red flags that we have mentioned in our red flag episode that someone who is in the midst of an addiction, 
We're not talking about someone who is in recovery and has been in recovery for or sober for a year or two years. We're talking about someone who is in the midst of that struggle. That is a red flag because it's contraindicated when it comes to doing couples work. If a couple is coming in looking to get guidance about their relationship and one person or both are in the midst of using, the relationship is going to take a back seat. First and foremost, the most thing that's important to address is the addiction, is the addictive behaviors, is the fact that they're self-medicating or using the addiction as a coping mechanism. So for those couples out there that are isolated in the home, in the midst of an addiction, this is really the biggest concern here. And maybe this is the opportunity. You know, for sure, you can't do it alone. The way you think the way your body is physiologically responding, all of that is all part of the whole idea of addiction. And not only is it the person that's the addict, it's the entire family system. And so everyone in that system needs healing. And that's why you can't do couples work because there isn't a safe place to be vulnerable enough to do couples work because both people or, you know, if it's a child of yours that that is the addict, everyone in the system needs healing. Well, you can't do that kind of work because you don't know who you're talking to, Mm -hmm. whether you're talking to the person or you're talking to the substance. Right. And, you know, that is that is where things get very complicated when you're trying to work on healing when wounds are are still being caused on a daily basis. One thing that we know that is the quickest way to shift your mindset if you're stuck in something like depression like cravings for a substance is go help someone else. And that's why AA has been such an an instrumental thing in helping people stay out of addiction because once someone gets sober, they're going back to help others and share their story and their journey. And the same thing is true if you're grieving, if you are um, scared about your finances, all that kind of stuff, you stay in your head. That is a dangerous place to be. And you need to reach out. And this is why we've, we're offering some of these avenues. But you as a human being, you have resources. You, there are absolutely people that want to help you and or that you could reach out and try to help, especially at this time. Because for all of us, being in our head is the worst place we can be. Yeah, it, it amazes me that even more so now than ever, businesses and neighborhoods and people in general are stepping it up to be there for each other. I mean, we just we just came here before doing the podcast. We dropped off a pizza on my sister's door. Yep. Right? Maintain that social distance. But, you know, just bringing a little bit of cheer into someone's life. It really normalizes things. And I feel like, you know, we've been through some other things before that weren't as talked about or as shared, like the bubble, the housing bubble, that I think impacted a lot of people, but nobody really talked about it or other times we've gone through recessions. And it feels like the whole country is very united in supporting each other so that we are able to regrow the economy and stay as healthy as we can. You know, we talked to my brother yesterday. Was that today or yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. <clears throat> and I, I haven't talked to him in a while. You know, he lives in Florida. I talked to both my sisters. You know, this is an opportunity to kind of reach out to people that you maybe you have fallen away from a little bit or haven't talked to those conversations can really pick you up or they can really be the catalyst of picking someone else up. Well, I think one of the differences here with this virus is that it is a great equalizer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter about the status that you have in, in our society. It is going to affect you just the same as everyone else. Yep. Our politicians are just as susceptible as the poorest people in the country. Absolutely. And and that is why it is so important for all of us to come together and to help everyone in need. And for those out there that are struggling alone, whether it be an addiction, whether it be anxiety, whether it be depression, you are not alone. You don't have to be alone. There are resources out there. I think we have said on past podcasts that Gene and I would be available. You just message us. 
through the Couple Synergy page on Facebook, we will return that message right away, right? We are dedicated to be there as a support for people as much as we can and, and to do our part. Yeah, that's one thing that I really love is the people that we know who are entrepreneurs, who are continuing to work regardless if they're making money or not. And that's a really beautiful life that, that someone has so much passion for the work that they do, that they do it whether they're getting paid or not. And that's how we feel. We feel that we have our skill set to offer and we would make sure that we will take care of everyone who contacts us. We've had past guests on our podcast that have talked about being in recovery themselves. Mm -hmm. The previous podcast with Pastor Mark and Lisa, he talked about his struggle with addiction. Joe McQuillan. Joe McQuillan. And we also have a podcast coming up on Thursday with Wendy and Eric, Mm -hmm. where Eric talked about his struggle with addiction and how it almost destroyed their marriage. Right. And how they came back from it. You know, everyone who comes back from an addiction is a fighter. I I don't think, you know, I know we've all heard stories of people who wake up and that was it. That was their last drink. But that doesn't mean they didn't have to fight for that, you know, and have to refocus and change your life because we are such habitual people, right? And to change a habit is uncomfortable for us. And the best way to change a habit is to replace it with something better. And so what, wherever you're at right now, try to find a structure, a structure that doesn't depend on how you feel in the moment, but that you do it just because you're having a structure. Especially if you're in your house, especially if you're by yourself. I, I think a lot of messages that we get from people are loved ones, you know, that see their loved one struggle with addiction. You know, maybe it's a spouse and they don't know how to help them. Yeah. You know, they, they, they want some answers, right? And they're looking for us to give them some advice on how they can get their spouse to work on the relationship and how to get them to be sober. And we don't have those answers for you. But I can tell you this. There are plenty of people out there that have been on that journey that would be happy to mentor you and support you through that. And what we know about addiction is that a person will be sober when they are ready. Mm -hmm. A, A lot of spouses think that they can take responsibility for their spouse, you know, to, you know, give an ultimatum or to make them go into treatment, make them become sober. And it just doesn't work that way. And there may be times that you're going to have to set some boundaries, absolutely, for yourself and for your family, but you can't make someone want treatment. You can't make someone want to be sober. You know, setting boundaries, it sounds so easy. It sounds so concrete and so black and white, but there's so much fear around it because the reason that you continue to enable someone who you know is doing something unhealthy is because you're afraid for them. You're afraid if you don't drive them to the store so they can get cigarettes at night, they're going to hurt themselves or they're going to, you know, not make it back. Or whatever the fear is, there's always a lot of fear on it. And that fear, it, it's very real. This is very real. I mean, we yeah. have our, our ear low to the ground on this one. And one of our clients, she just left her husband, you know, this past Sunday because he his drinking had increased to the point that it was completely unmanageable. And she just couldn't be around him anymore. She just couldn't watch him, you know, drive off this this proverbial cliff. And she had to go leave and she had to go stay by her parents and and she is going to stay there. And you know the the turmoil that she is going through, just this guilt, you know, and regret. You know, did I say the, th- the right thing? Did I do the right thing? You know, am, am I going to make his addiction worse by putting this undue stress on him and leaving? And, you know, those, that guilt and that, that stress, that regret, all of that is natural and normal. It just means that you care. 
Because if you didn't care, you'd be indifferent. It wouldn't be a, a non-issue for you. But the fact that you care about this person, the actions that you're taking actually are going to be the best for him that it could ever be. Right, because what's best for you is also best for the other person. What's best for your kids, what's best for everyone is exactly the same thing. And that's what's scary because it means that you're no longer trying to control something that you have no control over. And it is scary and it, and it takes courage and that's why support is so necessary. But whatever, you, whatever decision you make, I promise you it's not a selfish one. It is one that is best for everyone involved. In the same token, if you make a poor decision, that's worse for everyone involved as well. And there is no formula on this. You know, we're not saying that a standard across the board that if your spouse has an addiction, you need to leave them. No, because this is a case-by-case -case basis. And what works for someone is not going to work for you. And what works for you may not work for someone else. You have to learn to listen to your gut. You have to look, look past the guilt and the regret and, you know, that gerbil wheel that goes on in our heads that, you know, over and over again, debating yourself left and right, but really truly listen to your feelings deep down inside. And what is the right thing to do for you and your family? You know, and you hear that in the stories that people have shared with us that have gone through the, the journey of addiction and the person who is their primary person usually makes that decision. They make that decision that this is it. And, and I have to be, in essence, selfish, a healthy type of selfish, so that they can be self-persevering, so that, you know, they can't go down with the other person. That doesn't benefit them or their person. And that's, it is that scary and that real. And every story has that turning point. And, you know, it is true that the stress of life is so much greater today than ever before. People are losing their jobs. People are financially struggling. You know, people don't know what's going to happen in the next month. Right. And so because of that, you know, the the propensity of anxiety and stress and worry is so much greater. And for those that are struggling with addiction, it is a huge trigger. But you can do this. There is support out there. We all are bonding together in, in the midst of this crisis. And you're not alone, and you don't have to be alone. The AA community has created online meetings and so you can still connect with people in that way. There are counseling centers all across the country, including ours, the Lighthouse, that are creating free support groups and providing that online support. Even though you can't be face-to-face, -face, there's still someone out there on the line, on a phone, that can support you through this stressful time. You know, during this time of disruption and changes in our schedules, why not change your life? Why not let this be the time where you have that heart-to-heart -heart talk with yourself and say, you know what, I'm gonna get back in the driver's seat of my life and I'm gonna, I'm gonna master this and I'm gonna become a healthier person because your routine's already disrupted. Why not use that as an opportunity? In the midst of adversity, mm -hmm. this could be a great opportunity Absolutely. An opportunity for change. When you think about a sinus rhythm, it has a, a structure, it has a pattern to it. And this crisis that we're going through has completely disrupted that pattern, whatever that pattern was. And if that pattern wasn't good for you in your life, your pattern was dysfunctional, your pattern was dis-ease, your pattern was anxiety, worry, depression. This crisis has disrupted it now, given us almost a clean slate for all of us to start fresh from. 
You know, I remember, especially in the first few years of our company, and I would think about the uncertainty of our income. And I remember I would just go through this little ritual where I would say, I have a roof over my head. There's food in my refrigerator. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. Today. <laughs> just today. The bills are paid. Today. And I was very, we were very uncertain about tomorrow, but today, you know, and, and that's what it takes to stay in today because tomorrow's too uncertain. What you're talking about is practicing gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And taking a look at around you, the people that love you, the people that are around you, the things that you have in life that you can be grateful for. You know, we're always on a path and we have the power of choice and we can choose at any moment to take an angle which is whatever the word is when you have the same letters for the same word, angel. Shift your angle. And there's a saying that says there's a hundred steps between where you are and where you want to be. And the universe will take 99 of them. So be brave and go take the first step. Pick up the phone. Send a text. Get online with a 12-step support group. Connect with people. Embrace this period of time as an opportunity. Find gratitude for what you have and focus on the next moment and focus on the next right thing. We want to thank you again for joining us today and for listening to Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. And we hope that by listening to this episode today, it's enriched your life and your relationship. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive that is still scheduled for October 15th through 18th, 2020, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.